Good morning. Welcome to this month's edition of Hear Our Voices, a storytelling program, a different teller every month from the Museum of Native American History. We are so glad that you could join us for this session because I have the privilege of introducing an amazing storyteller. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Gail Ross. I am Cherokee and I live uh, in Northeastern Oklahoma in the Cherokee Nation. Many years ago, I was on my way to a storytelling festival in Whitehorse, Yukon, and we were on a ferry, my husband and I, going up to Skagway. And we heard someone beginning to sing on the boat. And so we went up and we joined the crowd of people who were listening to this young man play his drum and sing. And suddenly a humpback whale leaped from below the water over and over and over, leaping high and then slamming down. And then at last he turned his flukes up and waved at us and went back below the water. And when I was talking with Gene, he told me he was singing a whale calling song. So that'll tell you a little bit about this young man. Um, although I don't guess we're either of us as young as we were then. Gene Tagabin is Tlingit and Cherokee and Filipino. He is a raven dancer, a member of several clans in Alaska. Of course, I tell him it's his Cherokee blood that makes him so handsome. But he has traveled all over the country. He is a storyteller, a dancer, a mentor to so many young people in his tribe. Um, and I'm very, very pleased and privileged to have him this month for Hear Our Voices. Ladies and gentlemen, and young people of all ages, Gene Tagavan. Oh, gonna choose, gonna choose. Uh, what do? Uh, ah. Thank you, Gail, so much. And, and, uh, and yes, back in the, 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 I remember that time. We were on actually on a smaller, smaller boat, not the big ferry that usually goes. And so it was a, a really special time where that whale just came out. I don't know if you've ever seen a salmon jumping out of the water, but it was, it was doing, jumping out of the water like a salmon just once after the one after the next, after the next, after the next. And it was a beautiful sight. And so, uh, welcome everybody. Gonna choose, gonna choose. Good morning, good morning. And as my uh, good friend taught me, and she's uh, 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 Ani, you know, they, some people call them uh, Grove on too. She knows it's just good morning, hand sign language, good morning, you know. And so, if you see somebody, at the other end of the, the room, you just go, you know, or if you want to go, it's like, so you can go, good morning, you're looking good. And so it's like, uh, everybody out there, you're looking good, you know, and it's, it's good to be here in virtual land, and that's just how things are nowadays. And so let me get going here, and I'm going to uh, get going here with a song. And this song here that uh, I want to sing is just a, a way to get things going. And as I sing this song, I'm going to ask you, because these songs are stories too. And our stories are everywhere. And most of the times, our stories live within us too, passed on from one generation to the next. And uh, as my good friend and my mentor, uh, Larry Littlebird, told me, he says, uh, you know, gee, we are not just storytellers. We are story listeners first before we are those storytellers, you know? And, and so oftentimes as, to, as I sing this song to listen to the stories that come up for you. And I'm gonna ask you to, to go to the place of your ancestry, of your ancestry. Where are your ancestors from? You see, because we've been dreamt into existence and here we are, here we are. And to give acknowledgement to ancestors, you know, and so think of the land, 
Think of the water, the rivers, maybe the ocean, the mountains, the trees, the plant life. Maybe the animals that were around during that time and the people themselves. And if you can't remember, just think of the sunrise and sunset, the sound of the river or the waves coming on the shore, the gentle breeze that flows through the leaves. I love that when that gentle breeze flows through the leaves and the leaves are just flickering like that. And then the sunlight that comes through the leaves themselves, the leaves are flickering image that's on the ground. I love that. The sound of the eagle and the call of the coyote. And how the raven talks and the hum of the, of the hummingbird and the buzzing of the bees. So think of that, those things. Yeah, um, when, we, when I sing this song, you see, because our ancestors, they, they saw those same exact things. And there's these things in this world to change things that are changing so fast in this world today. There, there are some of those things that will never change. And those are some of the things that our ancestors listened to at, as well. And they viewed them and they saw the beauty in them. They saw the beauty of them as well. And so whenever you get lost and you want to find your way back, just go out there and take a look at these things and just listen and listen. And it'll bring you back to that place, that place of ancestry and spirit. I was taught that when you walk off the trail and you step, step foot into the forest, you have stepped and crossed that threshold into spirit. This forest is all spirit. And that's what stories are too. A sharing of spirit, a sharing of spirit and stepping into a little bit of that ancestry. Because I'm going to share a little bit of a few of those stories with you here this morning, this wonderful morning, in this moment, in this moment. And I thank you for being part of my story. For now, I am part of your story, too. And so I'm going to sing this song and, and stop talking a little bit here. You know, and, and as Gail and I start the storyteller support group is called On and On and On and On. And, and so uh, I can very well get into that too. And so, uh, so step into the land of your ancestors through your imagery of your mind and, you know, and envision yourself there. It was like during those times. And, and as, as I'm finished with the song, simply just say, thank you. Thank you. And if you know it in your language, just say it in your language. Uh, Ahu, hey, he ha, ahu, he he ha, ahu, hey, he ha, ahu, he he ha, hey, 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 ha, hey, 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 he he ha, hey, 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 he ha, hey, 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 he he ha. Uh, thank, you. thank you. And I'd love to hear that imagery that 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 was that's traveling through your mind and your, and your spirit and your whole being. Because when we think about that imagery, it's just not in our minds, but our whole body takes it in. Our whole body lives it, even down to our little pinky toes, you know, and it's like it's, it encompasses our whole body. And that's how powerful our, our, our when we go back and we think about our ancestry, you know, and, and such. And so my introduction. Although I've been introduced my whole time and I was taught that one of the most important things we do in our lives is learn how to introduce ourselves. And uh, so, Kayao, you hock to a song, Duck Dain Tana, Kat, Kalkit, Duck Kalk to Kandu, I hot city, which Kitanya hat, Ha Ishiki, he did do a song, say get away, why ya, Slagi, Filipino, I hack on a cheese, gonna cheese, and ya who son, gonna cheese, ho ho, 
ho, ho. So I just said hi. That's how we say hello as native people. My name is Gene Tagaban. My Shlinket name is Kayao. I'm of the Duck Dane Tong Clan, Raven Freshwater Sockeye Clan from Huna, uh, Alaska. The child of a Wishkaton, Eagle Shark Clan from Ahuan in Juneau, Alaska. Uh, I'm Cherokee Shlinket and Filipino, just like Gail said. So I consider myself a Cherokee Clinkapino. That means I like to eat my salmon with rice and cornbread. Yeah, which is the truth. And so it's really good to be here. And, and thank you for joining our, our minds together in that acknowledgement again of, of, of ancestry. I'm coming to you right now. I'm living on the lands of the Coast Salish of the, uh, the Puyallup people. And that's where I'm coming from you from right now, just to give acknowledgments to them and the spirit of the people who are there. And so with that, I'll just like want to share some stories with you. And, you know, and uh, so um, one of the stories I grew up with you know, so you see, my I was I was born in the wonderful village, uh, this village called Chicago, and I learned that Chicago is actually a native name of Chicago, Chicago or something like that. It's it's actually an indigenous name, and so I was born there from the Indian uh, Relocation Act that they had. My dad went over to Chicago to learn a trade, a business, to work in business after he came out of the military, but I was born there in Chicago. And I was almost born in a cab, as I, I guess as, as the story goes, because my mom, even to this day, is like she, she's still the same thing happens with my dad. You know, and she apparently she walked into the, the room and she told my dad, Joe, it's time to go. And he just sat there watching the football game going, oh, what do you mean? It's time to go. It's time to go. I need to go to the hospital. And instead of getting up right away, he goes, you mean right now? Yeah, right now. Let's go. I have to go. You have a child who's coming on the way and it's not waiting. And so they jumped in the cab and, and they went to the hospital. The Norwegian, I was born in a Norwegian hospital. Do you believe that? A little Indian, dark, dark skinned Indian kid, you know, born in a Norwegian hospital. But that's okay because my grandma lived in a Norwegian community in Petersburg, Alaska. So I don't know. There's some connection there somehow. So, uh, when they brought me home, my first crib was a dresser drawer. My first crib was a dresser drawer. And then they uh, uh, put me in there. My mom would always tell me, says, oh, you're always such a good baby. You never cried, you were quiet. But if you did cry, we would just close the drawer. I always think about, maybe that's why I like, like really closed places so much. I like that, that quietness and that isolation of a closed place. I don't get claustrophobic that much. Maybe that's why. Because I went white from my, my mama's belly, my, the womb, which was my first home, my mama's belly, into a closed dresser drawer, which probably still reminded me of that same place, that comfort and that warmth, you know? And so I still like that comfort and that warmth that I, I don't think I'll ever get over that, no matter how old I get. When I'm sleeping in the bed, my wife says, I just wrap up myself in a blanket so I look like a little burrito wrapped up in there, and, you know, and, and so uh, just wrapped up and it doesn't matter. And, but the thing is, these stories, it was my great grandma when I was still in my first home, my mama's womb, my first house, my great grandma would call and she could let me talk to that baby. And she, my mom would take the phone my trinket grandma, and she would put the phone up to her belly, and my great grandma would start talking, singing songs, and telling stories, telling stories. So people would like wonder when was my first experience of listening to stories and storytelling. It was probably even before I was born, before I was born, there in my mama's belly. And not only that, but when I was in my mama's belly, I would always listen because you're connected to spirit, you're connected to, to, to cells, you're connected to DNA and all that. And all that was still, as I'm in my mama's belly, was still telling me stories. You see, stories are everywhere, wherever you're at, and we pay attention. So one of the stories I want to share with you that I, I was raised on and has helped me through my life. I don't take these stories lightly because these stories guide me in my life. And so the story about Raven. Oh, 
Raven. He's a trickster up there of the Tlingit people up there in Southeast Alaska. And if you ever seen the Ravens up there, they're just like a little different. They're always just moving around, shifty. And there's one time where I saw a Raven. He went up to, he's always watching. He went up to the crosswalk and he could tell he was watching people because he went up to that crosswalk. He'd jump up and hit the walk button. And when that, that light turned on to walk, he'd walk across the street. And then he'd get to the other side. He'd jump up again and hit that button again. And then he'd be, I just watched him walking back and forth across the street, just having a good old time. You know, and, and that's, that's the ravens up there too. And, and so it's a, I want to show you this, this story of raven. Raven. Each way, you hope not a good way, yes. Your way, Kadoni. Raven. I was walking along the beach, and it was the beginning of time. The world was dark. The stars, the moon, and the sun were kept in boxes by a wealthy old man. He lived at the headwaters of the Nost River. The fishermen of the night. The spirits of the night told Raven of these treasures. And so Raven went to the house of the old man. Raven went to the house of Nashak Ankawu. It was there that Raven saw the old man's beautiful daughter. She was drinking water by the stream. So Raven had a plan. He was going to get the stars, the moon, and sun for all the people of the world. So Raven, he changed his spirit into a tiny hemlock needle. And with that beautiful daughter, went to drink her water, Raven floated down and landed in her cup. And when she drank that water, she also swallowed Raven. And soon she became pregnant and she gave birth to Raven in the form of a human child. Now everyone loved this child, everyone, except the mother-in-law. You see, it was the mother-in-law. She really knew that this little child had the spirit of raven in it. You know, because if you've ever seen a raven move, his head's always going up, down, back, forth, all around, always looking around. And that's how this child moved. And so this mother-in-law, she tell the people, no, you don't know what you're doing, that there, that child, that child is really raving. And the people would just go, oh, you're just crazy, old lady. You're crazy. You're kawashu. You're kawashu, which means you're just drunk. You're drunk with nonsense is what it is. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. And nobody was listening to that mother-in-law. And still to this day, still nobody listens to the mother-in-law. So Raven. He had a plan. He's going to get the stars, moon, and sun for all the people of the world. So that child with the spirit of Raven, he pointed up to the corner of the house, the box that contained the stars, and it began to cry. And that old man, he goes, no, you can't have that box. But he loved his grandchild. So he took the box down and he placed it in front of his grandchild. And he says, now you don't open that box. And that little baby goes. So that child played on that box. He ate on the box. And that little child danced on that box. And when nobody was looking, what do you think he did? Yes, he opened that box. And out of the box flew the stars into the nighttime sky forever. Oh, God, Yes, old man. My precious objects are gone forever. Oh. But he couldn't be upset. He loved his grandchild. Now the child with the spirit of Raven, the child with the spirit of Raven, pointed to the other corner of the house, the box that contained the moon. And he began to cry. <laughs> And the old man goes, no, I can't have that box. He cried some more. <sighs> and soon the old man gave in to him. He took the box down, the box that contained the moon, and he placed it in front of his grandchild. It says, you don't open that box, I tell you. Don't open that box. And that little baby looked up at him, gave him a thumbs up. Ah. <sighs> 
So he played on that box. He ate on that box. And that little child danced on that box. And when nobody was looking, what do you think he did? Yes, he opened that box. And out of the box flew the moon into the nighttime sky forever. Oh, God, my precious objects are gone forever, yells the old man. Oh. But he couldn't be upset. He loved that grandchild. Now, let me tell you, Raven is patient. He's very, very patient. So that child with the spirit of Raven pointed to the other corner of the house, the box that contained the sun, and he began to cry. And the old man goes, hey, no, you can't have that box. He cried some more. And still the old man goes, hey, no, hush, you can't have that box. That child cried and cried and cried. He cried so much that he got sick. And he got so sick that the people thought that he might die. And it was the beautiful daughter. She picked up her child and said, Father, is there anything worth more than the life of your grandchild? Oh, my dear, you're breaking my heart. You're breaking my heart. Oh, I hear you, my girl. I hear you. And so the old man took the box down that contained the sun and placed it in front of his grandchild. But this time he goes, he went to the people. He says, oh, my people there, oh, you watch my grandson. You'll make sure he doesn't open that box. And all the people, they went like this. Go ahead, let me see you do that. Yeah, yeah. But Raven is patient, very patient. So that child played on that box, ate on that box. He slept on that box and he danced on that box. After a while, some of the people, they got, they got hungry, so they went to go get something to eat. Some of them got tired, so they laid their head down to take a nap. And when nobody was looking, what do you think that child did? He opened that box, and out of the box flew the sun into the nighttime sky forever. Oh, God, my precious objects are gone forever. Oh, uh, the old man, he went up to the people and says, I thought I asked you to watch my grandson. Now what happened? And all the people could do was just go, I don't know. Oh, well, when nobody was looking, that child, that child, the spirit of Raven, Raven changed his spirit back into a bird again and took the last box, the one that is called the box of daylight. And he flew out that smoke hole with it. Oh, that old man. My precious objects are gone forever. Oh. Now, Raven, he was walking along the beach. He was walking along the beach. And he had the box of daylight with him. And he came up to those fishermen of the night, those spirits of the night. And they were cooking food. They were cooking food and Raven. Ah, oh, he was hungry. And Raven is always hungry. And so Raven came up to him. He said, give me your food. And those fishermen of the night, the spirits of the night, they go, oh, go away. You're just Raven. You're going to trick us. And Raven goes, oh, you treat me this way. Oh, I free the stars, the moon, and the sun. I'm the most precious gift in here for everyone. Now, give me your food. And the people refuse. They go, no, you just get out of here. And so this made Raven angry. So Raven opened that box, that box of daylight, just a crack. And daylight showed itself and went back inside that box. You see, I freed the stars, the moon, the sun. I've had the most precious gift in here for everyone. Now, give me your food. And still the people refused. No, no, go away. Give me your food. And still they said, ah, get out of here. Go away. Took, took, took. Go away. Get out of here. Oh, you're no good, Raven. Yeah. And so this rain really made Raven angry. So Raven opened that box. And daylight flashed throughout the world. Ah, oh, the spirits of the night, the fishermen of the night, they ran away and hid. They were scared. They ran away and hid. Some of them hid in the sky. 
Some of them hid in the forests. Some of them hid in the waters. The ones who hid in the skies became all the birds of the world. The ones who hid in the forest became all the animals of the world. The ones who hid in the waters became all the creatures of the waters. And then there are the ones, they stood up straight and they stood up tall. And they saw the world clearly for the first time. And they marveled at the beauty of it. And this is how Raven brought daylight to the world. But it was my grandmother. It was my great grandmother who told me that story before I was even born. And she would tell me, every time she'd tell me that story, she'd go, now grandson, now grandson. Ah, every time you hear that story, you always remember, you see, you see, you are the light of the world. You're the light of the world, my boy. Ah, sometimes you, just like that, you need to open up your heart, just like that box, and let your light shine. You're the light of the world, and you don't let anybody tell you any different. Oh, now you go, go get me a cup of coffee and a cookie. And I always carry that, that story with me, and I always remember that. You see, not only did I you know, hear these stories from my great-grandmother, but I had... The opportunity to to be with my great grandmother, and what a special gift that was to be with my great grandmother. You know, and uh, I just want to share this with you. My grandmother, my great grandmother. You see, I would go over to her house, my great grandmother's house. And I would sit there and I would watch the, the telly, the television with my great grandma, you know. And sometimes we would sit there and we, she would love to watch The Price is Right. Yeah, The Price is Right. And she would always get, get them right. And if she didn't get them wrong, she would always tell them that they were wrong anyways. Because she says, oh, they don't know out here in our communities here. They don't know what, how much things cost out here. Yeah, my great grandmother. You know, oftentimes she didn't speak too much English, but she could talk up a storm and clink at. Yeah. And my great grandma, we would sit there at her table and she would sew and do her artwork or she would knit and she would knit. And right outside her window, she had many, several hummingbird feeders there. And we would sit there and we would watch the hummingbirds come. And my great grandmother, she would tell me, she goes, oh, my boy, uh, I sure do love hummingbirds. You see, they're all really little fairies watching over us. Oh, I sure do love hummingbirds, my boy. My great grandmother, we would go to the, the Kuih, we call them the, the, the potlatch, the Indian parties, you know, and oftentimes as, as she aged, she would go there and she'd have her, her, her cane and she would just be hobbling in there. But as soon as the song started going, she would get up and she would start dancing and she'd start dancing and dancing and dancing. Oh, and she would just dance all night long. And me, I would be tired. I would be tired. And when I woke up in the morning, uh, she would be awake before me drinking her tea. I said, Grandma, didn't you get any sleep? She goes, oh, yeah, I did. I did. But son, you know, I try to wake up early and try to experience as much as I can. Oh, life too short, my boy. Life too short. Sometimes we'd be walking and there would be a rainbow, a beautiful rainbow. And I'd say, Grandma, look. Look at that rainbow there. Look at that rainbow. And she go, oh, look at that rainbow. Yes, yes, my boy. Every time you see a rainbow, you always think good thoughts. You think good thoughts and you will get your pot of gold. Ah, me? Ah, I already gave all my gold away, boy. I already gave all my gold away. Yeah. Sometimes she, I would say, 
she would cook and she would cook a dobo, a Filipino dish on the stove. And she put a little bit of this in, a little bit of that in, and she put the stove on. And she goes, oh, go to the back room and see if you can smell it. Because if you could smell it in the back room, it was done. And she'd tell me, my boy, you try to learn something every day. You learn something every day. Look at me, look how old I am. You see, I'm, 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 oh, it doesn't matter how old I am. You try to learn something every day. You see, it was one day that uh, I was gonna go see my great grandma. And I had the ticket in my hand to go see her. And that night, I got a phone call that my grandma went to sleep. And she went to sleep. And when I, got, when I went to go see her, there she was. She was lying there. She was lying there. And as she was lying there in her hand, she was holding an eagle feather that I, I, I beaded for her. And I remember when I gave her that eagle feather, I gave her, Grandma, I made this eagle feather for you. Oh, and I beaded it for you here. And I gave it to her and she took that feather and she got up and danced and danced and danced and danced right there. And I was wishing right there at that moment as she was laying there with that eagle feather, I was wishing, Grandma, please get up, Grandma, dance, dance, dance for me right now. Dance for me right now. You know, oftentimes it's my time to dance. It's my time to do my artwork. Sit there and just watch the prices of our ride or just sit there and watch the hummingbirds. I sure do love hummingbirds. So our stories, our stories, you know, and uh, yeah, what an honor to be able to hang out with my, my ancestors and my great grandma. And I know my great grandma with, is with me now and my grandmother, all my ancestors are with me, you know, cause they show up in many different ways, many different ways. If we just pay attention, if we just take the time to listen. Oftentimes, we get so used to them speaking to us, you know, we're that that the way that we're supposed to be spoken in, in, in with words, but spirit doesn't know that. They, I mean, they're they're beyond that. Spirit is beyond that, and so they'll come to us in many forms: the hummingbirds, the eagles, the ravens, the wind, the wind, the very wind itself. And if we listen, it was my uncle. This one time, I was standing on the beach with my uncle there in Southeast Alaska. As I'm standing on the beach with my uncle, I'm looking way out there and I go, uncle, why is it that, that back in the day, they didn't have any telephones? You know, and I asked this question before cell phones, when we had those, the phones, the rotary phones, you know, back, you know, and, and it's interesting how I, we went to an antiques uh, um, shop and I was with my little nephew you know, my wife and I were with our nephew and I said, oh my God, they had all these here phones on the roll. And, and they go, wow, look at all those phones. And he looked at him and he goes, what are those? I said, those are telephones. How do they work? I've never seen such a thing. 
you know and but it was like um as i'm on the beach it's like uncle why is it that that back in the day they didn't have any phones or anything and when there was a gathering that the people would show up all at the same time how did they know how did they know that uncle and with his arms crossed looking you know just like the way an uncle's look all stoic and spiritual didn't even look at me he just says we told the trees and it made so much sense to me i didn't even question it we told the trees oh okay we called the trees because many times when uh, we would talk to the trees anyways, because when it was time to carve or make a canoe, we would go, I watch my uncles or the leaders of the people, they would go and they'd touch the trees. They'd be talking to the trees. Are you the canoe that we've been looking for? Are you the mask that we've been looking for? So we told the trees, it is time for a gathering ceremony. Aku'ik. And, and then they would go to the beach and they would sing songs, sing songs, and the songs would be carried on the water, on the water. And then when it was time to show up, the, the fires, they would make fires, large fires on the beach, on the beach for the people. And out there in the canoes, when they came paddling in those canoes, they would see those fires from the distance. And out there, it looked like it was fires on the water way out there and they would show up and they would show up yeah we would tell the trees and it was my uncle too it's like this one time it's like i was asking my uncle you know this one time we we're in escondido california and we were at an old antique car shop and we're looking at all of these antique cars and not only the antique cars, but the price tags on those antique cars. Holy gee whiz. And my uncle says, oh, you see those cars right there? They're all old cars. Holy, look how beautiful they are. All oh, those cars. You see, look how much they are. Oh, that's a, that's a lot of money there. there. That means that those cars, these antique cars, these old cars, they're valuable. They're valuable. And then he goes, look at me, just like me. I'm like those cars, and I'm valuable. And then he looked right at me, he goes, you? Oh, you're like one of those new cars right now. You're pretty much worthless right now. One day you'll be valuable just like me. Yeah. And I asked my uncle, uncle, how did you get to know so much stuff? He goes, me? How did I get to know so much stuff? Nephew, I know a lot of nothing. The older I get, the more I realize that I know a lot of nothing. Ah, oh, you keep learning, son. You keep learning. You keep learning. And so... Uh, <laughs> Alone time ago, all the animals gathered to have a meeting. Now there was bear, mountain lion, eagle, raven, grandmother mouse was there. All the animals were there. And it was mountain lion who was in charge of this meeting. So mountain lion stepped forward and went, <clears throat> my brothers and sisters, it's so good that you're here. We have many important things to talk about. They were just about to start that meeting, and then they heard Rabbit outside singing as loud as he could. Nobody can hear a thing. And so Mountain Lion goes out there and says, hey, Rabbit, we're trying to have a meeting in there. But Rabbit kept singing away. And so Mountain Lion goes, took Rabbit's arm and put it into his back pocket. You can have that back later when we're done. Now let's get on with this meeting. And Rabbit was outside with only one arm. They were just about to start the meeting. And then they heard Rabbit outside. 
drumming away with only one arm. Nobody could hear a thing. This time it was Brother Bear. Brother Bear goes, hey, rabbit. Or time to have a meeting in there. But rabbit kept singing away. And so Bear goes, took rabbit's other arm and put that into his back pocket. You can have that back later when we're done. Now let's get on with this meeting. And rabbit was outside. No arms. They were just about to start the meeting again. And then they heard rabbit outside stomping with his feet. Nobody could hear a thing. This time it was coyote. Hey, rabbit. Come on, old brother. We're trying to have a meeting in there. But rabbit kept singing away. So coyote goes, took rabbit's leg and put that into his back pocket. You can have that back later when we're done. Maybe. And rabbit was outside. No arms, only one leg. They were just about to start that meeting again. And then they heard rabbit drum away outside with that big old fluffy rabbit tail of his. Nobody could hear a thing. This time it was Eagle. Eagle rises up out of his chair, circles over rabbit. And let's go, rabbit, it's eagle, man, it's eagle. A rabbit was singing away. So eagle comes down, picks up rabbit. And let's go, no, oh, no, rabbit. And then eagle goes, took rabbit's head. I know. Everyone went, holy, did that hurt? But they still heard. Because Rabbit, his song was coming from his heart. And whenever you sing, whenever you follow your heart, nobody can take that away from you. So they gave Rabbit his head back. They gave Rabbit his two arms back. And they had to wrestle Coyote to get his leg back. And they let Rabbit sing his song whenever he wanted to. Sing with me. Oh, and so that that song and that story was from Larry Littlebird from Laguna Pueblo, USA. And I, from even from Larry, I give you permission. Yes, please tell the story. Tell the story. I know that was a story that, that Gail and I traded once upon a time ago because, you know, with, with different tribes and different peoples, stories hold value. As oftentimes, as Native peoples, we would trade not only, not, not only goods, material goods, but songs, stories, and sometimes even ceremonies. And so that was a story, and, I, and, and we traded. And Gail traded me for a story about how... how um, buzzard, buzzard last time is, is got a bald head, but that's a whole nother story. And sometimes I tell that story and it's not too appropriate for young ones the way I tell it. <laughs> it depends on the audience though. It depends on the audience. And so, uh, so wonderful. And, and uh, take your, take your um, things off mute right now. I want to hear, I want to, uh, I just want to take a moment here before we close up and I, I share the last story. Do any of you have any questions for me or any wonderings for me at this time? You know, and, and I like to hear from people too. Yeah, yeah, Ellis, Ellis. Hi, Hi Ellis. Hi. Where are you located at? I'm in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Ah. Down, down the street from the museum a ways. Um, I, I heard you when you were talking in your own tongue, you, uh, 
some of the words that came out were Wichitaito, which I've heard here and there before, Jim Pepper and everything, and I wanted to know what that means. I have no idea. Oh. Because I, I, I don't recognize Wichitaito. You might have heard it in a different way. Oh, yeah. In a different, in a different, you might have heard it in a different way. Wichita. But Pep, but, yeah. Wich, but, Wichita. Um, yeah. Yeah. But anyways, you know, Pepper, man, Pepper. Yeah. It's like, uh, he was a good friend of another of my teachers, my teacher up at, at Archie Cavanaugh, who since passed away. He was a musician and Pepper and, and Archie was known as the, the Raven up there. They would play music together back and forth, you know, and, and Pepper was like really uh, connect with the native communities up there. Oh. Yeah. Well, Pepper was, well, Pepper was a native himself. And, and so it's like, yeah. So right on, right on. But I'm, I'm not, I'm, I don't recognize that word. Uh, no. word you know? Okay. So, but thanks for asking, brother. Thanks for asking. Thanks for asking. Any other Thank wonderings, you know, I saw, I saw Judy, when you came on, Judy, I had to, I take, take a second look because uh, you on screen here, you look very similar to uh, Jane Goodall, you know, <laughs> and I, yeah. And I've, I've met, I've met, I've met, Jane, you know, and I got to, to meet her and and, and 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 so I was like, oh hey, it's Jane, you know, and so anyways, I just had to mention that. Right when I saw you, I was like going, you know, it's like, oh hey. So any other wonderings or questions for me at this time? I'd like you to say more about talking to trees. We have a tree in our front yard that um we like to imagine. We live on Mount Sequoia. Ellis is my husband. So we're in the same house. <laughs> oh, you're in the same house with different rooms. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's fine. That's fine. That's, that's, that's like me and my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it works out well. And um, so we have a, a tree in the front yard that's a very old oak tree, maybe 500 years old. And and I talk to that tree. Um, and I, I have the sense that Native Americans met around this tree. And... Just, you know, that that's just that kind of listening to the tree rather than... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I don't know. Yeah, yeah, just but to learn how to listen. But also, uh, I would like to just to encourage you just to go out there and just take a, a glass of water. I know you it, the, the tree gathers water anyways, but just take a glass of water and put your love into that water. Mm, yeah. Put your love into that water. And the cells will change in that water. Uh -huh. And just offer the water to the tree and then take a little bit of food and offer food to the, that tree and that spirit of the tree and just be willing to hear and listen, you know, and, and, uh, uh, to what comes up and to sit there, just to sit there with the tree as I know you have mm -hmm. and listen to the tree and listen to that communication and to the, to the, uh, native peoples, you know, and one of the things too, it's like uh, uh, this this concept of Native Americans. You know, we're, we're indigenous Native people. To ask instead of refer to the people as Native Americans, but refer find out who the people were from that area, mm -hmm. and and ask by that. For instance, if it was Cherokee or Choctaw or whoever it was. Say, ah, oh, I want to acknowledge the Cherokee people of this land, or the indigenous people of this land. You know, and so you're you're calling, you're being more specific. Mm -hmm. You're being more specific. You know, and acknowledging that, and also not only that, but acknowledge your own ancestry because your ancestors are sitting with the ancestors from that land. Mm -hmm. And ask your ancestors because they already are. They're they're talking together already, anyways. <laughs> so yeah, you know, it's just like to to acknowledge your ancestors too because they're with the ancestors in, of of that area as well. Mm. And so yeah, to just try some things like that, yeah. and it works for me. I mean, but but that's my own personal hallucination. <laughs> and I don't mind. I don't mind sharing my hallucination with everybody else. So it works for me. Maybe it'll work for you. I can see how it might. You know, among my ancestors are Navajo and Mohawk. On two yeah. Well, also your European ancestors. Oftentimes, people are like we don't acknowledge that that part of us, you know, and, and so it's like because they 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 worked hard for you to be here in this world. 
I, I read so, about so, to, in my family, the women pioneers over the generations and the traveling that they did that allow me and my sister to be here. Yeah, but who are they over there in um, in Europe too? I, 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 if I could, you know, like who? Viking yeah. and Irish and English and Spanish and yeah, 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 yeah. So a mix of a mix of spirits. So, so anyways, I just wanted to acknowledge those who are on here too. And just uh, so thank you for those questions. Or mostly, I don't even ask to say questions. I say wonderings. What are your wonderings? I like to share this last story, and then after the story, I'm actually going to share a video. And we'll probably end it with that video and, and, uh, and come back on. And so this story here, time just goes by so fast, you know? We're already already done with the hour, and I can, I, I can just keep going on and on and on and on. And, and, and again, uh, but it's, a, it's, one of those, it's one of those things my uncle always told me. He goes, oh, yeah, no, time, sometimes time just goes by really fast. Oh, sometimes time just goes by real slow. Either way, time's going by. So you got to make the most of your time. So, oh. Raven was walking along the beach. And it was a time when there was no spirit. Everything was empty, like a clamshell. No spirit. And Raven... Walking along the beach, he looks far out into the ocean. Out there, he sees an island throwing fire into the sky. Raven wants to get that fire for all the people because he knows if he can get it, he will do good for all the people. But Raven doesn't know how to get it. He's not a good long distance flyer. So Raven's brother Hawk comes walking along the beach and Hawk has a long, long, long beak. Hawk, that young man is proud of that beak. Raven asks him, oh, my brother, can you help me? Hawk just walks by. Raven asks him again, my brother, I really need your help. Hawk just turns, looks, smiles a little bit. And Raven asks for a third time, I really need your help. And Hawk says, what you want me to do? I want you to get that fire way out there for me. How am I going to do that? I'll fix it for you, says Raven. So Raven goes up to a tree and he gets a branch from that tree and he puts a pitch at the end of that branch and he puts it into Hawk's beak, that long beak, and he ties it there with roots. And he says, Raven says, now you fly out there and give me that fire. And he tells him, that means have courage, be brave. What you're doing is for all the people of the world. So Raven flies way out there flies, flies. He's flying a long time and he gets to that, that fire and he circles through it once, twice, three times. And on the fourth time, that fire shoots up into the sky and, Ray and Hawk flies through it. Hawk is coming back now. He's been flying a long, long time and he's tired. He's tired and he's weary. And that fire starts to burn bright and it starts to burn hot, hot and it starts to melt. Hawk's beak, melt it down to the curved beak, the small curved beak it is now. And although Hawk is in much pain, he still hangs on to that fire because what he is doing is for all the people of the world. Ah, oh, tears are running down Hawk's face. And Raven sees his brother having troubles. And so Raven calls out to him, Ye go Kwan, have courage, be brave, my brother. What you are doing is for all the people. And Raven flies out there. Ah, oh, and together they fly back to shore. Raven supporting Hawk and they make it back to shore. And that's when Raven, he takes that fire and he throws it into the rocks. He takes that fire, he throws it into the trees. He takes that fire, he throws it into all the animals, into the water. He takes that fire and he throws it into the human beings. And now we all have that fire. We all have that fire that Raven brought to the people. But more than that, we all share that spirit, that spirit that lives in our hearts. Uh, and that's that, that, that fire that Raven brought to the people. And when I grew up, I grew up, my people, they saw that, yeah, that young man is a dancer. He's a Raven dancer. 
And so they taught me how to do that dance. It says, when you do that dance, you're lighting the fire in the hearts of the people. You know, light the fire in the hearts of the people. And so at this time, I'd like to share this dance. I'd like to share this prayer with you. Ah. Uh, to stories, to listen to stories, to be present to stories. And you listen to somebody else's story, you're also present to your own story, and to acknowledge your own story. And those ancestors who've traveled with you, they're always traveling with you. And I say, and that's the, the word for thank you in the Shrinke language, and uh, if it comes out sounding like good as cheese, that's okay. I know what you're saying. So gonna cheese wado, wado, salam. So, Gail, it's so good to see you. And those who are here, and Charlotte, you know, out there, you know, and thank you so much to Gail and Charlotte and the Native American uh, History Museum for 
or bringing this 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 opportunity to the people, to the people. And, and wow. I thank my ancestors for allowing me to be here as well. And so, um, wow. we thank you, and we thank your ancestors for allowing you to be here with us. And we want to thank you for joining us, Ellis, Judy. Um, here, our voices is a storytelling program that happens the second Saturday of every month. And if you look at the Mona uh, Museum of Native American History website, we have archived the different storytellers that we have already um, had in the series. And so we hope you'll join us second Saturday of every month and go to the website and listen to some of the stories that we've already had. Uh, Jean, thank you. I mean, I'm, it's really extra special for me to get to see you. Um, I always, I always feel so um, moved by your, the dance. Well, your stories as well, but thank you especially for that dance. And may we all see the dances that are happening all around us all the time, especially now, you guys. Um, be safe. Be well. Thank uh -huh. you. Thank you. Well,